Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here and welcome or welcome back to another YouTube video on the channel and today guys we are going to be continuing our three game match reviews now. Uh, in today's video, the start of round 11, the first three games of round 11, three very massive games is what we're going to be reviewing today. Now this one is going out a little bit later than normal, maybe about an hour or 30 or so minutes later than normal, Um, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, the game that's currently on would have progressed a little bit more than what I was hoping for uh, by the time that it would normally be going out. But again, uh, it's not like it's really that bad. Three games, the first three games of round 11 were Sydney versus Richmond, Geelong versus Adelaide and Brisbane versus DWS. And I will tell you, those are three big games. We learnt a lot and uh, yeah, they were some really good games. So we're not going to waste too much time. We're going to be starting off with the Friday night footy, Sydney versus Richmond at the SCG. So it was a massive start to the round with Sydney 16 10 106 getting over the Tigers 15 10 100 really high scoring game both teams entering triple digits and the last time that Richmond played the SCG was back in 2016 when they got smashed by 100 plus points so um, their their record at the SCG was looking kind of ugly coming into this game. And, well, they were playing, actually. They were probably the better team, uh, if you were to ask me to be completely honest. Uh, especially in the first half, they coughed up a 33-point lead to Sydney. Um, and did they deserve the 50-metre penalty at the end of the game? You guys let me know. Warner said that he didn't hear the siren and banged it into the crowd. So, um, mixed thoughts on that one. To be completely honest, I've got no idea which side I take. But the first quarter was actually Sydney quite early. And then Richmond got themselves back into the game. Sydney were relatively inaccurate as well. 6-7 at half time. 10-10 uh, at in the third quarter. Richmond were inaccurate in the final turn. They got uh, three goals, six. So they probably could have won this game had they been a little bit more accurate as well. Um, the second quarter was all Tigers though. Sydney had no run whatsoever. Um... The third quarter was all Sydney. That was their real progress back into the game. The Tigers getting one goal, two in that quarter compared to the Swans who got three goals, three. Uh, and then the final turn was Sydney. It was a big turnaround for Sydney as well. This was a massive win for them as well. They needed this one. Warner, good with 27 disposals. Buddy Franklin lit up the SCG with five goals. Nan Kerbis, 114 fantasy and the nine tackles. But... The big thing about this game was that, yes, yeah, Sydney were the winners and they needed that. The winner was going to get a huge advantage on the other team. Um, and Sydney turned out to be that team. They want to be making the top eight. They're already on 20, 28 points. So I don't know where... I, you can't lock them in for a top eight, but they're getting there. They are they are progressing our Sydney and 28 points is a pretty good start to the year after 11 rounds. Um, and the Swans just getting the better of the Tigers. And let's have a look at AFL Fantasy. So 114 for Nan Curvis, 108 for Parker, 107 for Mills, 97 for Graham, and 88 for Presti, 80, 87 for Obon, 85 for Warner, 84 for Short, and then, of course, 83 for Franklin with his five goals. Five goals for Franklin, three goals for Reed. He was looking pretty dangerous up forward. Haywood also good with the two goals. Ralph Smith impressive with the two goals as well. Um, Graham Short. With the two goals, and of course Shane Edwards, a, a great um, user with the two goals. Now, no player necessarily really impressed with the 30-plus 30 dispos 30 disposals. There was no one on the ground that got 30-plus disposals. The highest was Chad Warner with 27, 26 for Parker and Lloyd and Koch, and then 25 for Prestia, 22 for Short and Baker. They do use the ball very well to them too. Ramby, 8 marks, 7 for Mills and Vlosten. Nine tackles for Graham and Nan Curves, eight for Rowbottom, seven for Mills. Now to the hit outs, 26 for Laddams, 24 for Nan Curves, uh, 16 for Solder, eight for Reed, and one for Cotton. A little bit of an um, unusual name to see, but there you have it. And now, um, let's see, they went inside 50 quite even actually 60 to 57, 141 handballs for the Tigers. The Swans opting to use kick more. Uh, 47 efficiency inside 50, 47% apiece. Clearances here, it's relatively even. Um, and then let's see, marks in Sydney's favour. Um, Tigers led for majority of the game, just over half, probably about a third, uh, sorry, two thirds of the game, perhaps. Um, and nothing else is looking that appealing. The Swans had eight bounces to the Tigers too. So... What a win this one was for Sydney. It was a come from behind, massive win. They did need this, I felt like. 
Um, their season's been a little bit of a et kind of spot, and they needed this win uh, under some Friday night lights, and that's exactly what they produced at their home ground. The SCG, the Swans win by six to, to start off uh, to open up a brilliant round of footy. Down to Cadinia Park we go. GMHBA Stadium, the toughest road trip in footy. And Geelong 15-7-97 were just too good for Adelaide 7-13-55. Now, uh, in tipping, I almost got the score correct. I said 97-54. I was gutted when the Crows just managed to get one behind at the end of the game. Um, so it denied me of the perfect score uh, for this game. But the Crows were actually pretty decent. They they were not great, though, however, at the same time, uh, kicking 0-6 in the first term. So they probably they should have been leading at quarter time. Uh, and probably, well, probably not at half time, but they should have been leading at quarter time. And then the second quarter was all the cats. They just really started getting going. Um, third quarter was probably in Adelaide's favour for most of it uh, until later when the cats managed just to get a few goals in their final term. Uh, it was all Cats again. So the Cats were dominant. The Cats played dominant 40, 42-point winners, uh, especially down at Cadinia Park. Tom Stewart, 40 disposals, was amazing. Jeremy Cameron, four goals. He, uh, he really got Adelaide. 17 tackles for Tom Atkins. That's pressure. That's pressure. That is real pressure there, 17 tackles. 169 fantasy for Tom Stewart. That's a big number. Don't forget about Sam DeConing either. Um, you definitely don't want to be forgetting about him. He is a really good player. Wow, look at these big numbers. 169 fantasy for Tom Stewart. Riley O'Brien got recalled. 159 fantasy. Mark Blitzarves, 135 fantasy. 126 for Cam Guthrie. 119 for Rory Laird. 116 for Joel Selwood. 112 for Jackson Haley. 108 for Brian Myers. 104 for Ben Keys. 98 for Jordan Dawson and Tom Hawkins. 96 for Brandon Parfitt. The recalled Matt Crouch gets 91 AFL fantasy, while Brandon Parfitt also takes 91 fantasy. Now, goals behind. Four goals for Cameron. Fogarty was looking good up forward for Adelaide, kicking the three goals one. Um, Myers, Stengel also getting three goals. Hawker's got two goals in a relatively quiet outing for him. McAdam was also pretty decent for the Adelaide Crows with the one goal three. So he got his, he's got, he got his shots. 40 disposals for Tom Stewart, 38 for Rory Laird, 34 for Cam Guthrie, 30 for Brandon Parfitt, 29 for Ben Keys, 28 for O'Brien. He was good, O'Brien. 27 for Haitley and Dawson, uh, and then 26 for Crouch. Now, if we have a look at the marks, 16 for Tom Stewart, 10 for Buse, 9 for Guthrie and DeConing. DeConing has to get that Rising Star nomination at some time. I reckon this round... Uh, depending on other results, should be his round. 17 tackles for Tom Atkins, 13 for Selwood, 9 for Blitzars, 8 for Guthrie, Laird and Haightley, and then 7 for the big Ruckman, O'Brien and Saligo. That's some real pressure there. Hit out 47 for O'Brien. He should keep his spot. I don't see that going anywhere. Um, big number of AFL Fantasy, fantastic amount of disposals. Hit out 47, um, 31 for Blitzars, 7 for Hawkins, 3 for Shannon Neal on debut, 3 for Phil Thorpe, 1 for Cameron, 1 for Fogarty, but yeah, just going back to Riley Field, um, not Riley Field, but Riley O'Brien. What a day he had! Um, I reckon he he should definitely not be losing his spot. But the Cats did go inside fifty way more times than the Adelaide Crows, proving better in the end. The Crows they did stick with them for well, they were they were pretty much in the game for the first three quarters, but the last quarter really got them. Um, but the Cats were always better at every single stage of the game, and it was just a shots for Adelaide inaccuracy. Again, not this, not necessarily that it cost them, but it was um, harmful in the end. The Cats leading for majority of this game. But again, the real thing, look at that pressure. 178 tackles, that is that is insane pressure. Um, but yeah, the Crows weren't really good at all in today's game. They did fight and they, they hung in there for a little while, but the Cats just proving way too good, too strong. They was, always had a pretty decent lead on the Adelaide Crows, winning by 42 in a nice big win for them. And now up to the Gabba Fortress we go, where Brisbane 16 14 110 defeat the Giants 15 6 96. The Giants, they competed in this one. They were in this game for, well, the whole game, really. They were good. And the first quarter was actually really interesting. 37 to 49 is the quarter time score, showing what sort of a game we were in for. And the game was high scoring. And, well, both teams managed to produce that. It probably wasn't the most exciting second quarter, but Brisbane managed to just wrangle a little bit of momentum just to be down by. 
a, less than a goal at the main break. The third quarter, that's where Brisbane really uh, steadied their ship and brought it right back into their favour. Um, and the Giants only manufacturing two goals in that term. And then in the final quarter, the Giants tried to wrangle momentum back, but it was just too late as Brisbane walked out the better team by 14 points. It wasn't the most convincing win. They haven't had convincing wins up there either, though have Brisbane this year. They defeated Collingwood by seven. They defeated the Giants by 14. They haven't had the most convincing wins, but when a good team rocks up to the Gabba, they still can really get the job done. They are such a good team up there, and even though they may not be winning by too much, they are still getting the job done, which is the main thing. GWS, though, they did compete. They really fought hard, uh, but again, just not enough, and it's really hard to beat a team like Brisbane, especially on their home ground. 39 disposal for Lockie Neal. He was great. Toby Green finishes with four goals after getting three first-quarter goals. Uh, Lockie Neal, 143 fantasy, superb seven tackles for Jared Lyons. Um, Jared Neal, uh, Jared Neal, sorry, um, Lockie Neal, 143 fantasy, 133 for Jared Berry, uh, 120 for Josh Kelly, 108 for Stephen Cornelio, 107 for Isaac Cumming, 101 for um, for um, Harry Himmelberg, 93 for Oscar McInerney, 89 for Peatling, and... Um, 85 for Toby Green. Uh, now goals behind. Four goals for Green and McCarthy. Three goals for Peatling. He's been impressive. Two for Hogan, Robinson, McStay. Uh, Robertson, sorry. McStay, Neil Kelly. That's Neil getting right in with things. And then a, a huge monstrous goal by Zach Bailey as well. Um, Lockie Neil superb with 39 disposals. 33 for Berry. 31 for Kelly. 29 for Cumming. Um, 25 for Rayner. And Cornelio Marks, 10 for Berry, 9 for Hogan, um, and then 7 for the following Andrews, Adams, Iden, and Himmelberg. Now to the tackles, 7 for Lyon, 6 for Neil and Perryman. Hitouts, 39 for McInerney, 19 for Flynn, 12 for, for Darcy Fort, and 3 for Zach Sprow. Now some team stats. Kicks were actually locked on 215 apiece for the kicking. Um... 60 inside 50 is a 50, so reasonably close, but Brisbane were uh, more efficient in that area by 10, um, and they were more efficient in the efficiency inside 50 by 11%. Hitouts locked at 19 apiece. Brisbane were winning the hitouts, uh, but the clearances were locked at 37 apiece, so the Giants getting the better out of the centre, and Lions better with the stoppage. Now, um... Nothing else looking that great. They actually, read, they actually led for relatively even times, with the Giants being the better by 32 seconds, leading just more by 32 seconds. Um, and the Giants were actually pretty good. They really fought hard in this one. Brisbane just proving to be the better team, however, um, which is which is good for the Giants, so that they actually really managed to compete in this game. The Giants led for the first half. Brisbane led for the second half, which does come out on top the second half to snare the win. Where the Giants had a good stage in the first quarter, they started strongly. Um, they got out to about a 30 or so point lead, um, and Brisbane were so good. They're, they're so classy, they managed to wrangle it back into their favour. So right now, MCG madness is happening Fremantle have wrangled the game back into their favour so far. Melbourne 6 9 45 are currently leading Fremantle 4 7 31. They're leaning by 14 points. They should be up by more. They were looking really good. As you can see up there, That's that they were right on a 30 point lead. 43 to 12 at one stage, leaning by 31. So Freo have just wrangled the game back into their favour. And there go Melbourne again, just extending that lead back out to 20. And now. It will get quite tough for the Dockers, who have only scored 31. They can still hang on for a victory, though. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Rest of the round coming up. Saturday night footy for West Coast and the Western Bulldogs at Optus Stadium. That one will be proving big for the winner. Now, the biggest game in the round, though, I say Gold Coast versus Hawthorne. Footy returns to Darwin for Saturday night footy. Gold Coast versus Hawthorne, TIO Stadium. Massive contest coming up there. The winner, uh, that the winner is really crucial. Um, good old rivals Collingwood versus Carlton go head to head. Three twenty at the MCG tomorrow. St Kilda Marvel clash on the first day. Um, 
St Kilda North Melbourne clash on the first uh, game on the Sunday. And then you finish it off where it'll be wet and sloppy in Adelaide for Port Adelaide versus Essendon. Now to the ladder we go and then to round 12, seeing what we've got there. So the live ladder, if Melbourne hang on, boy, it'll be hard for competitors, well, for the other teams to catch them. They'll go 11-0 and if that was to be the case. And the Dockers would lose out on a spot in the top four. Are they currently in the top four? No, they're not. Um... So obviously needing to try and win the game to take percentage, um, to take percentage into their favour and get a spot in the top four. Uh, Sydney and St Kilda are also on twenty eight points, but St Kilda will play again tomorrow to maybe take back the top four. Richmond on twenty four points, sitting shaky now on the eight, and the West Sydney Bulldogs result could affect them, and they could jump skip the Tigers, and the Dogs could go into the top four. Collingwood's result also important, but percentage is not really favouring them. Port Adelaide, they do need to win desperately, as do the winner of tonight, Gold Coast Hawthorne, can have another crack at the eight. Also reasonably short on percentage, but their percentage is relatively even. GWS with a decent performance uh, in 14th spot. Crows in uh, 15th, not going great. Essendon, North Melbourne, West Coast rounds it out. So into round 12, what have we got here? Bulldogs, Cats starts things off. Crows, Eagles, Suns, North at TIO Stadium again. Melbourne, Sydney, Hawthorne, Collingwood, Frio, Lions. So that's what we've got. 51 to 31 at Melbourne Frio. So who can take that game out? That's going to be interesting to see. And this video should be out before the game is ended. So that is going to wrap up today's match reviews. So Melbourne versus Frio, West Coast versus Western Bulldogs, and Gold Coast versus Hawthorne will be the second lot of games. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to... Oh, Frio just got a goal. That brings it right back into things. That brings them back into things. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like. And subscribe and hit that notification bell. Send you guys and then miss another another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much for watching. So bye everyone. Flaming footy out.